Hi, I'm Fred Masudi from the University of Colorado, and I'm here today with Dr. John Spurtis, Professor of Medicine at St. Luke's Mid-America Heart Institute at UMKC. We're here to honor Dr. Spurtis with the American Heart Association Quality of Care and Outcomes Research Council Distinguished Achievement Award in recognition of Dr. Spurtis' many contributions to the QCOR Council. Congratulations, John. Thank you, Fred. I'm really honored. It's... Can you tell us a little bit about the evolution of the council? How did the QCOR Council come to be? Well, you know, we've been actually very fortunate that the American Heart Association has been very interested in trying to improve the quality of care and patients' experiences with care. And about 15 years ago, um, a colleague of mine, Nathan Every, myself, and Harlan Krumholtz were interested at a time where there were very few people doing or interested or even valuing outcomes research in bringing together people from around the country with these interests to think about how to measure and improve the quality of care and how to understand patients' outcomes. And uh, we literally, uh, uh, I, I was talking to Nathan, Nathan was talking to Harlan, he thought it was a good idea. He was talking to the president of the American Heart Association at that time, they thought it was a good idea. and. In that era, we were able to sort of get approval on a fast track to try the very first outcomes conference in San Diego. And I believe you came to that conference. And I was there. I met you and John Rumsfeld uh, virtually for the first time. I had met John once before, and it was a um, really a magical moment. I mean, there was an energy that was born out of that conference. I mean, I'm sure you remember, and people were very enthusiastic because we hadn't really been thinking about studying the system of healthcare delivery in cardiology from a cardiologist's perspective quite in that way before. And so the Heart Association, at that time the American College of Cardiology and the VA all contributed for that first session, uh, decided to keep it going. And we didn't exactly know what direction we were going at that time, but it you know, sort of morphed into what now, it's, it's I think the 15th year of uh, an annual scientific forum. And it, has really morphed into the international um, sort of destination for those of us who are struggling to figure out how to improve healthcare. And from that came the council, they came the journal, came the grants uh, that they've done to support outcomes research. And I, I think we've been very fortunate to be at the right place at the right time. And it's become a terrific home. And now what I find most exciting is the new generation of scholars who are getting very excited, very interested, very passionate about working in this space and coming to this conference in order to share somewhat timidly their ideas to get the encouragement that they need. And I think they're going to make a huge impact going forward. So in general, you've talked a lot about the conference. What do you think are the highlights of this conference? What makes it different than some of the other conferences that you go to? Well, first, I, I think it's, it's a much more intimate conference. I mean, the, um, I, I like the large annual scientific sessions of the AHA or the American College of Cardiology or the European Co College of Cardiology. But what I um, feel is, is challenging there is you sort of get lost. If you want to find people doing interesting research in your area, they could be at one end of the building, nothing for two days, then there are three simultaneously at different ends of the building. Here, there, there are, everyone is sort of together. There is a um, uh, three large poster sessions that are designed to allow both sort of more senior but also more junior faculty and trainees presenting their research, getting feedback, and really almost everybody who is really engaged and committed to the field does everything they can to come to this conference. Not that everyone makes it every year, but you start to A, have uh, great friendships with people because year after year you get to meet them and spend time and catch up on what each other's doing. Collaborations form out of that. And you have a very nice opportunity as a more junior person to have more senior people who you read their articles, you may have wanted to emulate some of their studies or some of their questions or some of their ways of thinking. They're right there to talk with and to share your ideas. And people, there's a culture of collaboration here that I think is really energizing and it's very exciting. And it has, even today, some of that sparkle that the very first meeting in San Diego did. Yeah, it's been a wonderful conference the many years that I've attended. Um, then talking about the council again, you're being recognized for your service to the AHA QCOR Council. Well deserved. Can you tell me what you think are the couple of the most important functions of the council, some of the most important achievements of the council? Well, I, I think the council is um, 
a, a very important voice within the AHA organization for keeping our focus on um, the quality of care, having the patient be first. You know, the um, AHA supports remarkable basic science research, but sometimes we distill the patient down to a few myocytes or a few proteins within the myocyte, and we forget that there's a living person there, and we forget that our goals are to alleviate their symptoms, improve their functioning, augment their quality of life, and the QCOR Council is sort of that annoying voice in the back of your head constantly reminding you where True North is in our research endeavors. And so I think um, it served a, a terrific role for the AHA. The uh, registries that they've developed, the Get With The Guidelines registries, have been really a remarkable tool for monitoring, measuring, and improving care. And I'm not sure that would have had nearly the success without the active engagement of the QCOR Council in trying to lead that. And, I believe they've published over 200 peer-reviewed articles now, and, and almost every one of those has a member of our council in some role helping to facilitate that sharing of knowledge, that generation of new knowledge, and uh, forming the foundation of future quality improvement registries and programs that they have. So it's a very exciting and important role within the larger organization. So really big and important commitment both by the AHA and the council and the council members to understanding and improving quality of care for patients with cardiovascular disease. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, the, the, the passion of our group is, is great. I mean, people spend hours each year, I mean, tens and hundreds of hours volunteering to help with the council and the council activities, writing scientific statements, leading the conference, and it's a real labor of love. And I, um, I, it's a very dedicated group, and it's a nice fraternity to be a part of, not that there's any insult to the women in the group, but it's a, it's a you know, multi-gender fraternity, so. Yeah. Good, well, <laughs> again, John, congratulations on your award, and thank you for your commitment and dedication to the QCOR Council. Thanks so much, I really appreciate it. You bet.